Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, assure you that Trudy and I are doing uh, well at the governor's residence tonight. We're just fine. Thanks for people who've shown some concern. Uh, we know today's been a very tumultuous day for Americans and Washingtonians for obvious reasons. On a day in our nation's capital where we were to effectuate the most important act of our democracy, which is the peaceful transfer of power, it was forcefully interrupted by those who refused to accept verdicts of the people, verdicts of the courts, and the truth itself. Here in our capital, uh, in Washington, on a day that was to be dedicated to preparing for the opening day of our legislative session so that we could address our challenges, in, including the pandemic, uh, that were, unfortunately, was interrupted by similar acts of attempted intimidation. But I have some good news tonight to share with my fellow Washingtonians. Uh, those acts of intimidation will not succeed in any way, shape, or form. We will continue the work we're doing to protect the health of Washingtonians. In our nation's capital, Congress will follow the will of the American people and take yet another step along the long march to protecting people's rights of self-government that has so far succeeded uh, through frequent moments of tension in our nation's history. Now, I know we are going through a moment of great turmoil. Passions are high part because we have suffered serial and constant untruths being told to citizens from the highest office in the land. But I am confident that we are on the verge of overcoming this, as we have in the past, and we will restore the ability to perpetuate self-governance. I'm confident that our work here in the state's capital will be similarly productive, beginning next week when legislators, Republicans and Democrats, meet to work to fashion joint resolutions to our mutual challenges. I revile these acts of sedition and intimidation that we've seen in our nation today. And I call on all elected leaders to condemn this. I especially encourage Republican leaders to do some serious soul searching. It's time for them to allow anyone to pander to these falsehoods. And this should be about more than one expired presidency. Everyone has a role to play in getting disinformation out of our civic discourse. I don't think it's asking too much of Republican leaders to show the, this act of courage and thank those who have. I believe that together this spirit will lead to successful efforts here in our state's capital and in our nation's capital. And I'm greatly appreciated uh, those who've seen to our safety, the State Patrol. And I want to thank the members of the press who uh, had to go through some intimidation of their own today to report the facts. We appreciate that. And I want to express, if I can, a personal sentiment that I felt very strongly today, and I think that many feel. And that is a sense of deep outrage and, frankly, anger at the sight of people seizing the citadel of democracy, showing an oafish behavior in the chamber of the United States Senate, where so many leaders, Republican and Democrat, have participated in great debates. Today was no debate of ideas. It was a juvenile and attempted dangerous intimidation. And I know that we have to work together to find solutions to the benefit of our citizens, Republicans and Democrats alike. And in that spirit, I think it would be well tonight, amidst uh, the troubling news of the day, to hearken back to what President Abraham Lincoln said during another time of great national turmoil. He said this, though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory, stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land, will yet swell the chorus of the Union, when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. So on this day of great assaults on our democracy, let us all seek the higher plane, which calls us to a common ground 
even in the face of this outrageous conduct. This is a most difficult task, but we are called to it tonight, and our nation is up to that task, and our state is up to that task. So be well. We are going to get through this. Thank you, and good night. So Governor Jay Inslee speaking on a taped statement released uh, just about 15 minutes ago or so taped from inside the governor's mansion where he was this afternoon. No injuries to report, no damage up at the mansion, but they do have a broken gate that they're working on right now. The state patrol called today's activity foolish and unacceptable. But as of tonight, no one has been arrested. That could change, though. It was right around 3 o'clock this afternoon when a group of more than 100 people busted their way through the pedestrian entrance to the gated governor's mansion. This has never happened before here. The residence is right next to the state capitol, where for several hours, several hundred people earlier this afternoon have been giving speeches about what they believe was a fraudulent election. Some also criticized the governor for his COVID restrictions. The demonstration had been peaceful until the group broke through the gate. After about 20 minutes, the state patrol got everyone in the group to leave with some assistance from the local sheriff's department. No one was arrested. WSP says that that might have actually made things worse. But an investigation is underway, and those who trespassed could face charges. The safety of our elected leaders is one of the democratic institutions that we all hold dear. Threatening and challenging those institutions, whether it's a person, a building, or a facility, or even the idea of that safety is an assault on democracy. We are paid to defend that. The gate is uh, up and running now. There looks to be a car that's just, just about to come out of the, the mansion here. When that gate was broken and those dozens made their way through the, the pedestrian side here, there was only one uniformed state patrol person. We believe it was a, a sergeant who was unable. She tried. She, she held a couple people back, but she was unable to stop that crowd as it burst through the gate. I asked the state patrol, a different spokesperson, whether or not they were truly prepared for this. And I was told, quote, we can always do better. Live at the Capitol in Olympia, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News.